Good morning. So uh, welcome to today's uh, uh, conference. Um, my name is Phil Newman. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Longevity Technology. Uh, and as you may be aware, this is a Master Investor Masterclass at Investing in the Age of Longevity. So um, welcome to those joining us online, uh, but likewise welcome to you in real life, IRL, uh, which is great to have, obviously, uh, the opportunity to be back in rooms and having coffees and networking, which has been obviously uh, a very nice opportunity for those of us that have been doing it over the last couple of days. Um, just a couple of things to point out before we get into the session today. Um, that's my next slide, so I'll, I won't talk about that just for a moment. Um, we're going to be using a system called Slido uh, to pose questions. There's a very tight agenda today, so not much chance for Q&A, but if you do have any questions for the presenters, and there is a chance to ask those questions. I'll uh, do those questions on your behalf. Um, were to look up here and log in at Slido and use the participant code there, that'll enable you to, uh, to post questions as well. It really is gonna be a very important day because there are a lot of events happening in Longevity Week, but for, for those of us interested in the segue between uh, science and commerce, this really is the uh, the very special day. And um, there are other events happening as part of Longevity Week. The last two days have been really quite spectacular uh, for those that have been able to, to attend those days. And um, the reason this picture is up here uh, is because that's another spectacular event that happened uh, back in 2007. Um, the reason why it's up there is because it's one of those one of those in my mind. I, I'm never going to forget uh, that event. Uh, it was 2007 and I'm a, a bit of a Led Zeppelin fanboy and I managed to get tickets uh, through my friend John who just got them through somebody who was a friend of a friend. It was a, a, an amazing thing to do. Great fortune. Uh, but in many respects I, I look upon uh, the fact that I'm now a longevity fanboy. Uh, I've been uh, very much focused on the longevity sector uh, with my colleagues now for probably about three and a half years. Um, my introduction was with uh, uh, with Jim Mellon and his book. I remember reading uh, an article uh, about juvenescence at the time um, and uh, what was actually Ligenesis, who we're gonna speak uh, hear from today. And you know, I think that when I look back at that event and I look back at the, uh, the event that we've got today, which is a very select event, uh, a lot of faces we know, uh, but likewise, um, a lot of things are going to be happening in this sector over the over the coming weeks and uh, months, and really, uh, as we see it, next year is going to be a, a very big year. A bit of uh, housekeeping. Um, there's no fire drill planned for today, so uh, if there is a fire drill, you need to go straight out the front door, turn left and left, as I say, but don't forget to use Slido. So uh, 2002 is going to be a, uh, a pretty spectacular year. Um, using a sort of Donald Rumsfeldism, there's, uh, there's a lot of known knowns, a lot of known unknowns. Um, and I know that uh, there are some very interesting things happening uh, in the sector as we go forward next year. The fact that that's a, a blue origin rocket is probably not lost on, uh, on, on many of you in relation to what's happening with, uh, uh, with Jeff Bezos and uh, the work that he's, the money he's putting into Altos Labs. But likewise, the, a lot of the known unknowns, as a, as a media organization, uh, we, we get inside track on a lot of things that are happening. We have to respect confidentiality, of course, when we, when we uh, get news about things that are happening in the future. But there are people here today that are, are really going to be forming uh, next year is absolutely going to be big. So I would look upon this event as my opportunity to be your MC for today as one of those events that I'm gonna put in my, uh, in my bank, very much like that Led Zeppelin event. So uh, I don't really go into too much about uh, longevity. A lot of people have uh, their own definitions of longevity. Uh, this is ours. Uh, the current paradigm, as we all know, is, is focused on fixing disease, and we really wanna be in a position where we can stop that. Uh, people start to get uh, diseases of aging in their sick. And as we know, uh, in the UK specifically, we have a big morbidity issue with uh, care homes being filled up. Health span and lifespan, which of course is mitigating those diseases before they happen and compressing that morbidity at the end that all of us are working on. And as you'll see in a short while, uh, the definition of longevity is really trying to be in the position where you, you have no disease through your life and likewise have a very uh, short compressed morbidity at the end of your life. And for some people that lifetime, that lifetime is going to be very extensive. 
So um, is this sector just for billionaires? Uh, well, no, it's not. Um, there's a lot of things happening, as you know. You can see this stuff happening with uh, uh, Altos Labs and uh, David Sinclair uh, meeting uh, 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 one of our one of our domestic millionaires. But likewise, it's it's one of those world has a major uh, population issue coming to it. Uh, in the science sessions in Oxford yesterday, there was some very interesting uh, data about what's happening with birth rates in various countries. But as you can see at the bottom there. The, uh, the UK, Europe, uh, and the US is going to have one in four of us age 65 and above uh, by 2050, which is a pretty staggering fact when you, when you think about it. And the issue for, for governments and the policymakers is that, as we all know, the uh, fertility rates are declining, and we're in a position where the tax earning uh, population is in decline as well. So the government uh, awareness and the policy awareness uh, around the world is going to be very important. And you can see here this data that comes from the USA. Uh, this is showing, as you can see, the percentage of US healthcare spending uh, versus GDP off the charts, as, as, you, as, you, as you can see here. So the need for commercializing what many of us are doing, both in terms of the uh, the finance side of the industry as well as the scientific side of the industry is, is, is very important. So um, the uh, three professors here, uh, Andrew Scott, who is part of uh, uh, Longevity Week, along with uh, Jim and uh, Dafina, uh, they've put together a very interesting report recently, which is how targeting aging as opposed to targeting diseases can really um, benefit uh, the macro economy. And the figure, as you can see here, is that one year uh, of increased life expectancy by slowing that down is worth $38 trillion um, at an international level, which is you know, over $300, $367 trillion uh, over a 10-year block. So that's what that looks like, which is obviously a huge figure. And then when you start to compare the, the 10 times factor of, uh, of the US uh, national debt, you can see that actually there is a, a huge opportunity uh, with the science and the technology and the commerce that we are going to be talking about today uh, as, a, as a growing community. So I'm a big fan of Jeffrey Moore's uh, chasm theory. Um, a, lo a lot of people ask us, you know, are we over the chasm yet in relation to what's happening in longevity? Well, I think that there's a lot of things that are tipping towards uh, longevity really happening. As you can see, there are, there's, a, there's, a, there's a before and after effectively there with uh, the arguments like you know, mouse models, are they transla translating, you know, filling up the world with, uh, with loads of old people, is that, a, is that a sensible idea? But likewise, there's lots of enabling technologies happening now with cellular reprogramming, uh, AI, and you know, I'm, I'm particularly excited about how blockchain is going to form a very important part of uh, managing outcomes, individual outcomes for people, as well as uh, uh, science. science and development. So um, as you do, I was in a, in a restaurant with my, my colleague William and um, we were talking with, a, with a, a, a young couple who were part of a, uh, a momentum behind a cryptocurrency fund, which is going to be uh, $500 million uh, worth of uh, crypto investment. And their plan is to, is to use some of that uh, to go into longevity. And I was explaining about the fact that uh, markets go in different cycles. And uh, I was re reflecting on the fact that in 2001, um, I was in an industry uh, which was called machine to machine at the time. And that is actually what we call IoT now, but at the time it was called machine to machine. And it was the first time where this device here, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, power PC, I think it was called, pocket PC from, um, from Microsoft had just come out. And up until that point, we'd just been using the SMS channel to, to communicate data between machines, basically. Uh, and uh, we were in Cambridge at the time, and um, they had just launched their first GPRS uh, system, which was the precursor to the 5G that we're all, all using today. And it was really interesting when we were talking to these people that, you know, first of all, I felt very old, um, talking about things 20 years ago when they were probably still at school. Uh, but likewise, about the cycles that actually uh, industries go through. So when you look at how uh, IoT has now become a, a huge industry sector. Uh, you can draw parallels between what's happening in longevity and other sectors. I, I've, I've also liked to draw a parallel between fintech and what's happening in this sector now because you know, fintech was one of those that had a lot of barriers to entry to start off with and then off it went and, and it's been a, uh, a great success since. So obviously what happens between 2001 and the periods where we are now, of course, is, is the development of the marketplace and the funding of that marketplace, that early capital that comes into markets and, and helps growth. 
Well, um, we're going to be talking about a lot of that today. And a lot of the definition about the market is one of those things that we become particularly vexed with as an organization, which is what is longevity. So you can see there are two data sets here. I won't, I won't talk about them, but really what we want to do is be in a position of identifying as, as, uh, as an industry, what is longevity? And as you can see here, um, this is all about um, preventing damage of aging and then potentially reversing the damage of that aging at a, at a later stage. So um, what we've done is we've, as an organization, mapped that out. Uh, a lot of people have different definitions beyond rejuvenation as to what they would consider longevity to be. So we as an organization have got a uh, quite complex chart, as you can see here, which sets out where we see uh, the, the, the map of longevity. And there are certain sectors that are definitely outside of that. Um, for example, um, care home technology is not within longevity, but likewise aging in place is because that's a very important part of people keeping their independence and, uh, and their health span uh, over a longer period. So the, the sector has been super busy. Uh, we're talking about investment today. You can see here in 2021, there was actually $2 billion uh, of investment uh, across 40 deals going into longevity, which is, which is huge. Uh, and for you, for you that can see, uh, these are the top 10 investment deals. So there's the uh, mystery wrapped in an enigma that is uh, Calico at the top there, through to um, Cameron, uh, sorry, uh, Cambrian, which is uh, James Payer's company, uh, who've just raised 100 million for their fund. And we'll be talking to James a little later today. So we, we are challenged as an organization to identify how big the sector is going to be. This is a, a very simple equation that we're working through, which is uh, talking about the, uh, the pipeline of investment uh, associated with the pipeline of, of research and development. So you can see that from left to right, there's an attrition process going through the vagaries of, uh, of the clinical development process, all the way through to defining how big a market is going to be. So of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of the science is focused on uh, orphan uh, uh, outcomes, whether it's going to be osteoarthritis or whatever it may be, but those are obviously segues to that larger opportunity which of course is that, uh, that national rejuvenation. So um, when you look at what's happening in terms of uh, clinical research, you can see well longevity research started uh, quite a number of years back now, but you can see the acceleration uh, from PubMed data associated with the, words, uh, the word longevity. But it's not just longevity as well. You can see that there are lots of other sectors within our, within our science remits that are covering um, uh, and growing very significantly over, over these last few years. So the companies that are being formulated around this economy are, are growing. You can see that they have grown uh, very significantly over the, uh, over the last few years. And then what that looks like in terms of where their geography is, it's probably a little difficult to see, but you can see that the majority of them are going to be based in the States. But we are seeing a lot of activity happening now uh, in the UK and Europe, which of course is hugely encouraging. Uh, but of course, the capital that is associated with biotech and uh, information tech that sits in the US is obviously helping accelerate uh, that R&D economy into, into commerce. The stage that those companies are at is, is very interesting as well. You can see the big line at the bottom is that they are seed and series A. Obviously that, that reduces as companies go through the cycles of their, uh, of their growth. But interestingly, you can see that likewise, there are a number of those companies that are already uh, IPO'd. So when you look at what the, uh, the vagaries of being a uh, publicly quoted market are and, and associate that with longevity, actually you can see here that the companies that are in in this field are really doing rather well. Um, and you can see Cellink at the end there, a 3D bioprinting company, their share price has, uh, has done very well since, they, uh, since they've debuted on the public market. And you can see that actually, when you're a publicly quoted business, this is a, a timestamp of a year across uh, September to September, that in general, uh, they all, their cumulative uh, increase was uh, 22%, which is very encouraging. We'll be talking about commercialization and uh, funding routes as we go through today. But 12 billion so far has been invested in longevity. Uh, the 100 billion figure is there from the uh, US National Cancer Institute. You can see that actually, of course, there's a, there's a big delta between the two, but we are seeing increasing levels of activity now happening in uh, longevity investment, which of course is very encouraging for, for everybody in the room here today. And the scientific pipelines that everybody's going through, of course, a lot of, a lot of those are still preclinical, but we're gonna hear today about those, those companies that are now pushing into the early stages of the clinical pipeline and demonstrating their, their value to the longevity economy, both scientifically uh, and, and uh, economically. So in terms of the, uh, the patients and, uh, and the consumers that are out there, 
will will they adopt? I, I have very interesting conversations. I'm sure many of you do around uh, pub tables or uh, uh, dinner tables associated with the industry that we're in. And is that a, is that a good thing? We did a lot of market research uh, in relation to the field of supplements, and you can see that actually there are a lot of people that have got uh, some significant concerns here. Well, of them, are, well, over all of them are over fifty percent about the areas that are concerning them. So the question about uh, patient adoption and consumer adoption is is really not not a relevant one. I think the one about patient adoption is going to be interesting to all of us because there is a a clinical layer in our industry that doesn't fully exist yet. And that is something that a lot of the therapies that we're going to be talking about today will need to have support with education into the, uh, into the clinical sphere. You can see here from our, from our market research report, which was the supplements report, um, the amount of money that people are prepared to pay for, uh, for, their, uh, for their own longevity. Likewise, interestingly, you can see that either um, these people are checking their biomarkers or will be intending to check their biomarkers going forwards. And it's not just older people. Um, as you can see, the Gen Xs are, are very similar, and we also have the same data for, uh, for millennials. So there's a lot of readership um, from uh, younger communities that we receive, and I think that a lot of people are very vested in their longevity, but perhaps they're not aware of the opportunities that our industry is going to represent for them as we go through. So will people adopt? Yes, absolutely they will. Um, aged rock stars, of course, you know, they're, they're all part of the, part of the mix. Uh, I'm glad to say that as a, as a Led Zeppelin fan, uh, Jimmy Page made it to, to number three uh, in, the, uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, but I'm also very glad to say that we have the uh, semblance of the Longevity Hall of Fame here today in terms of our speakers. So I won't read them all out because we're going to see them all here today. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, there are my contact details if you, if you need uh, uh, copies of all the slides. And I think it's probably about time I invited our first speaker to, uh, to the conference today.